The Institute is a, is a place that brings together a number of independent groups and puts them in an environment which is conducive to collaboration. And the unusual feature of this institute is that it brings together those research groups from people that are in the Faculty of Health Sciences as well as the Faculty of Science. So it's an unusual structure in as much as it is trans-faculty at UCT. The IBM is interestingly located within this fishbowl of a, of a building and I think that's an interesting uh, metaphor because it really is a fishbowl of different researchers from different locations all over the world. The mix of uh, expertise and the scientists and the great minds that one finds here. And it's getting those people who has traditionally worked in the lab, in the clinic, in the populations, get them together to work together. So in some way what we've tried to say in the Institute, the space is not mine or yours, the space is ours. And what I really love is I come up for coffee and I'll end up having a conversation with the immunologists about a project I'm thinking about and it clicks with something they're doing and so we end up talking and now we're collaborating. It very much is around recognising the strengths of having laboratories, community, and clinical expertise in one building. And I think the richness of that makes us unique and certainly almost gives us a responsibility to exploit that to the fullest. And one of the exciting things about South Africa is that it really is in transition. And where previously we would expect a country coming through transition to, to have a reduced burden of infectious diseases as chronic diseases increases, what we have in this situation is a high burden of HIV and TB and an emerging burden of sort of hypertension and diabetes. And these diseases don't just coexist, some of them also interact. I live in a city of about three and a half million people. We notify more tuberculosis in this city than the whole of the United States of America and a good part of Europe. Then I work in a community where, you know, our incidence of HIV still today, even though we have antiretrovirals and we, we have messages and we're telling people every day about how to protect themselves from HIV, a young woman has an incidence of about 7%. Um, so seven in every hundred will become HIV infected annually in the communities where I live. So that's the reality of South Africa, it is all around us. One of the most sustainable interventions would be to develop a new and better vaccine to prevent tuberculosis. And we cannot do it on our own. We have to be in a home where there are many other quality researchers, um, uh, academics with which we can interact. Um, and the IDM is the ideal home for such an endeavor. We're situated in the epicenter of the HIV TB co-epidemic. We're in a place where we can ideally address that huge problem. We are located where we are needed most and where we can easily train uh, future scientists. So I think for that reason, doing the research here in the place where it's really needed and having access to the kinds of specimens and so on that we have is really advantageous. And so for me, that's what makes this institute special. It makes it special in South Africa, it makes it special in an African context. The notion of being able to work in a multidisciplinary way, and that was, in fact, the original strategic intent of the institute. And it also has world-class scientists and amazing research facilities, so you can immediately be close to where the problems are and still have the facilities to address them immediately. And um, that combination is difficult to find in other African areas. IDM is really constitutes of, of fundamental research and clinical research. And I think these two elements are very important um, and uh, we contribute to the fundamental research and uh, hopefully the clinical research learns from our results. We fulfill a very critical basic science, physical science component to the work that's done here. So we interface very strongly with uh, the clinical groups in the Institute, um, but provide the technology-driven angle to be able to address the fundamental biomedical problems. IDM allows for a cross-discipline collaboration. It allows a researcher like myself who does transition between those aspects to really do that quite, quite easily because I can draw from the strengths that, that exist uh, in all of those fields in the Institute. And it's key to have people that are strong in those particular disciplines, so the basic science, the clinical, 
and the, and the public health, but also have people that are able to transition between the different disciplines. The most exciting project we've been involved in is to make HIV vaccines, of which we've got two vaccines that have gone to clinical trial. This is a huge project, so although I led the project, it involved a lot of different disciplines and a lot of senior people. But what the IDM does is bring all these different people together and different expertise to drive projects. The IDM uh, itself has given uh, H3D um, a very important position to tap into in terms of the complementary expertise to allow drug discovery to be conducted in an integrated uh, manner because it requires multiple disciplines which are very well represented within IDM. One of our goals is to train in Africa for Africa. Capacity development is a major goal of this institute and we have implemented over the last five or six years three specific initiatives that are aimed at increasing the flow of students both in the basic sciences and in the clinical track from master's, PhD or medical qualification right the way up through to early career uh, investigators. So that we could get a body of junior investigators within the institute who were conducting relevant infectious diseases research. Training the next generation of African scientists is really important. I'm one of them and I'm training other younger students um, to become scientists. And our focus here is not just on the science but also on the scientists. I think it would be good when people drive past on the freeway and they see the glass building of the IDM that they say that's where all these discoveries are taking place as people might drive past through to skew and say yeah that's where the first heart transplant took place. <laughs>